All right, so uh, we're going to be going over kinematics today, okay, kind of just introducing the concept and reviewing a couple things from Science 10. Uh, kinematics is the branch of physics that describes the motion of objects or systems um, just in terms of what they're doing. Okay? How are they moving, but not why? Right, so we're only analyzing the actual movement and motion of the objects in kinematics. As we said, mechanics and dynamics kind of go together, and they look at the reasons for the movement. Is there work being done? Is there force being applied? Okay, things like that. All right. Okay, so if I'm ever doing kind of this kind of direct instruction, the first slide is generally going to look like this. It's going to have the lesson number and title, and then it's going to have the key points. Right? And those are also in your notes package okay? that gives you an idea of what kind of things you might want to review if you're studying for a quiz or an exam or something like that. Okay? So the key points for today, understand the motion of objects and systems can be described in terms of displacement, time, and velocity. Okay? All of which, well, displacement and velocity are vector quantities. We could also look at that from the point of view of distance and speed as well, which would be scalar. Okay? Define operationally and compare and contrast scalar and vector quantities. Okay? And define velocity as a change in position during a time interval. Okay? So that means basically that you are able to do something you learned how to do back last year. And that would be that V equals D over T. Okay? Velocity equals displacement divided by time which can also be written the way that point described, okay? Which would be my change in position, my final position minus my initial position, okay, divided by time. Okay, so what that would mean is if I start right here, this would be position, my initial position, and it would be zero, right? And then if I walk three meters east, of that position, okay, well, I'm now, my final position is three meters east. My initial position was zero. My displacement is three meters east, okay? That took me three seconds, we'll say, right? Well, three divided by three then is one, all right? My, my velocity during that time would be one meter per second east, okay? Everybody all right with that? All right, the, this is, so this is the vector analysis, okay? The other way we could look at that is like this. And no, I'm not crazy or senile. That is a different formula. Okay? V equals D over T written that way is speed equals distance divided by time. Okay? That's not about your change in position anymore. It's about how far did you go and how fast did you go. Okay? Whereas this one is how far and in what direction did you go and how, how quickly did you change your position. Okay, so they're different. They're looking at the same motion from different points of view. Okay, okay. question so far, is that ringing the bell, the scalar and vector stuff? Okay, is time scalar or vector? Scalar. It's scalar, yeah, because time only goes forward. Okay. Um, if, if time were vector, okay, then, then we, could, we could go different directions in it. Now, we do have a big problem in North American society especially about how we talk about distance, speed, and time. We talk about it totally wrong. How far is it to Edmonton? 300 km. Okay, 300 K. Okay. Very rarely do I get someone saying that. How many of you are thinking about three hours right now? What did I ask you? What's the I asked how far, right? Okay, how far is it to Edmonton? I didn't ask how long it takes to get to Edmonton. Does it always take three hours to get to Edmonton? No, I've driven to Edmonton lots of times. Okay, I'm not going to tell you how quickly I've driven there, but it's taken me as many as nine hours to get back. Okay, you get into a snowstorm and they close the road, right? Like you're not. Edmonton isn't always three hours from here, but it is always about 300 kilometers from here, okay? Unless the North American continent is gonna split wide open in the middle, that's always gonna be the case, okay? So we just, we do this thing in North American society that's wrong. When people ask us how far away something is, we tell them how long it takes to get there, okay? Which is really messed up when you think about it, 
Okay? That's not what they ask, nor can we guarantee that that is how far away it is. Okay? Because time is dependent on these two things. Okay? The distance or displacement isn't going to change, okay? but the speed at which you can travel may. And that will affect how long it takes. Okay? But you can't affect how far it is to Edmonton. Okay? It's always going to be the same distance away. Everyone follow me there? So that's something we have to watch out for because it's, it's a big wording thing okay, that we, we do wrong. So if you have a question and it says, uh, you know, gives you some numbers and then says, how far did the object go? Don't say two hours. Okay? That's how long the object went for. Okay? That's different. Okay? How fast did the object go? I'm looking for speed. How fast and in what direction? I'm looking for velocity. Okay? Things like that. So we have to know what's being asked of us so that we do it right. Okay, so something that, like, uh, as we were saying, we do wrong in North American society is that we tell people things that are incorrect when they ask us for something. Because we make assumptions and we say, well, this is probably what they want, and we'll tell them that. Okay? Um, so we want to try and move away from that in this course okay? and tell people you know, exactly what they're asking for. Sometimes use scalar descriptions, sometimes use vector descriptions. Okay? So if someone was to ask me, you know, um, how far it is to Calgary, okay, um, I might say it's 40 kilometers. Okay. Did I give them a scalar or a vector description? Scalar. Yeah, scalar. I didn't tell them it's 40 kilometers north of here. Okay. I just said it was 40 kilometers from here. Okay. Is that more or less useful? Yeah, I mean, we can look at it that way. It could be less useful, but we do have a vast interconnected system of roads, okay, that have really good signage generally, okay, that would help us to get from one place to another, right? I mean, when you're driving on the highway, the signs don't typically tell you which direction something is. This is Edmonton, 200 kilometers. I mean, you're looking at that sign, you're going in the direction of Edmonton, right? If you have to make a turn, there'll be another sign that'll tell you that, okay? But most of the time, we use scalar descriptions on our signage. And that's fine. We are in a road environment. If you're out in the wilderness, yeah, oh, that campground is 40 kilometers from here. You're screwed. How many choices do you have for which way to go? 360. Every degree of the circle you could turn in. And your chances of getting there are, well, 1 in 360. Okay, that's not very good. I don't like those odds. Right? So sometimes it's, it's okay to give a scalar description, sometimes it's okay to get a vector description, just make sure you're giving them what they want. Okay? I'll give you an example of a time when that happened to me, someone didn't give me what I was asking for. Okay? Um, a buddy and me were um, hiking, we were backpacking in the summertime, and we're both physics teachers, this is why the story is a little bit embarrassing. Um, and we had been hiking all day, we hiked about 35 kilometers, and we figured we should have been where we were supposed to be, but we weren't. And we're like, okay, did we take a wrong turn? Are we lost? What's going on? Sit down, look at the map. We're out of water, we haven't eaten, so our brains are not working well, okay? And all of a sudden we see this guy, like, bebopping up the hill, and he's wearing, like, army fatigues, and he's carrying a pack that has to weigh twice what ours weigh and he's like jogging, slash running up the hill towards us, which doesn't really occur to us at the time. And we're like, dude, do you know where Tumbling Falls Campground is? Like we're kind of thinking we should be there, whatever. And the guy's like, oh yeah, Mike, it's like 20 minutes down the hill. And we're like, oh, sweet. It's only 20 minutes from here. And what did we let him do? <coughs> What did we ask him? How far, how far is it? What did he tell us? How long it took. It tell, he told us how long it takes a, an Australian Special Forces Army guy out for a jog with a 100-pound pack to run that distance. Not two out-of-shape physics teachers on their summer vacation to walk downhill. An hour later, we stumble into camp, and we are cursing this guy because we're dehydrated and hungry and hangry. We're like planning on how we're going to find him and get revenge. And, and I mean, after we got some hydration, then we're like, do you realize what we just did? We just let somebody tell us how far away something was by telling us how long it took them to do it. We are so stupid. 
Okay, but that's that's what can happen, right? Like we could have got really, really lost because if after 20 minutes we had just gone, ah, oh, screw it, we're lost. Okay, like we we might have turned around and gone the wrong way. Okay, luckily we were just too tired to think anymore. We just kept walking in the same direction. Okay, um, but yeah, it, that's that's what can happen. Okay, we want to make sure we're giving accurate either scalar or vector descriptions of what people are asking for. Okay, so we could also give a vector description. Now a vector description has more information. Okay? It's more descriptive because it's not just how far or how fast, it's also in what direction. Okay? So if I'm telling somebody where Calgary is, okay, I might say it's 40 kilometers away, 13 degrees west of north. Okay? That's great if you are got a helicopter. Right? You can just fly straight there. All right? That's, okay? Which one's more accurate? I said it was 40 kilometers away, and then I said it was 40 kilometers away at 13 degrees west of north. Which one, which description was more accurate? They always feel like they are because they give us more information. Okay? But that's a trick that we can fall into. Accuracy isn't about how much information I give you. It's about how I measure the magnitude of the value. Okay? I said 40 kilometers in both cases. They're equally accurate. One's more descriptive. One also gives a direction. But accuracy comes from how did I measure it? Okay. If I said 40 kilometers, it's somewhere between 39 and 41 kilometers. I only measured it or gave the information to the nearest kilometer. Okay. Had I said 40.1 kilometers and 40 kilometers at 13 degrees west of north, which one of those is more accurate? 40.1. 40.1. That's accurate to plus or minus 100 meters. Okay? So accuracy isn't about whether I give you a scalar description or a vector description. It's about how accurately did I measure it. Okay? Does everyone follow the difference? Because it's easy for us to default to vectors are more accurate. Because they always seem like they are. Because they have more information. Okay? They definitely have more information. But they can be far less accurate. It all depends on how they're measured. Okay. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, let's say I want to go from my house to Walmart for whatever reason. Okay, and can, can I walk like straight to Walmart from anywhere in town other than like right behind Walmart? Like even there, there's a fence usually between those houses that were right on the parking lot. So no, I can't walk in a straight line to Walmart. So let's just say that, you know, I have, if I'm leaving my house, I'm going to walk along the path and then I'm going to go across the bridge. And there's only two places in town where you can do that. Okay. Um, well, three if you're walking on the walking bridge. Okay. And then I'm going to follow the, you know, the sidewalk and the road and, you know, take some turns and things like that. And I'll eventually get to Walmart. Okay. So that green line there, that represents my distance. It's how far I had to go to get from my house to Walmart. Is that actually how far away Walmart is? No. Okay. Walmart is along this pink line. How far away Walmart is. Okay. The shortest distance between two points is always a straight line. Well, that is my displacement. When I get to Walmart, that will be how far or how much I have changed my position. Okay. And it would have a vector. Okay. So everyone follow me there, the difference? Okay. So distance and displacement are describing the same trip, house to Walmart, okay. but they're looking at it from two different points of view. The scalar description, the distance, is how far did I actually have to walk to get there, okay. whereas the displacement is how much and in what direction did I change my position by. Okay. Um, what does your car's odometer show you? Distance or displacement? Distance. Distance. Why is that important? If your odometer read displacement, what would it read every time you come home? Zero. No, it would read how far it is from the dealership to your house. It was a trick question. 
But every time you take it to the dealership, it'll read zero. No one ever gets that right. That's okay. I, I set you up. Um, yeah, but it would it would always read it would always come back, right? It wouldn't. But your your odometer never gets lower. Okay, especially now that they're all digital and computerized. Okay, back in the day when they were mechanical, people would pull the dash apart and turn them back, and then tell people, well, yeah, this car that has six hundred thousand kilometers on it only has a hundred thousand kilometers on it. Okay, it's like dirty trick. That's why they've gone all digital because unless you can reprogram the computer, it'll tell you exactly how far you have driven that car. Okay? It never gets smaller because it's showing you a scalar quantity, how far you've driven the car. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so let's say that we do this trip, okay? and when I get to Walmart, I have walked four kilometers. Okay, that would be my distance. Let's say that takes me a half an hour. What's my speed? Eight kilometers per hour. Because speed is distance divided by time. So I take my four kilometers and I divide by 0.5 hours. That would give me eight kilometers per hour. If we think logically about it, if I walked four kilometers in a half an hour, if I kept walking for another half an hour, I'd walk another four kilometers. Again, I get a total of eight. Everybody all right with that? Okay. Now, let's say that when I get to Walmart, okay, I am, what did I write for a number here? I don't even have it down. Okay, I'll have to make it up. All right, let's say that when I get to Walmart, looking at this picture here, that I change my position by um, let's see, 2.7, we'll say. And that I go uh, 40 degrees north of west, okay? That would be my displacement. That's how much I've changed my position. 2.7 kilometers at 40 degrees north of west. And why did I write it like that? Why did I write it north of west instead of just northwest? How many northwests are there? One. What angle is it? Like if we're looking at a compass, right? This whole sector would be the northwest sector of your compass. But only one direction in here is truly northwest. And that'd be 45 degrees. Okay, because then you're 45 degrees north of west, or 45 degrees west of, west of north. Okay, so we don't ever use like southeast or northwest. We always say it's this many degrees in this direction from this prime direction. Okay, the prime directions are north, east, south, and west. Okay, so you could be south of east, or you could be east of north. Okay, we just always go in that direction. Okay, we'll get more experience with that as time goes. All right, so that would be my displacement. So my displacement's 2.7 kilometers at 40 degrees north of west. So if I wanted to calculate my velocity, could I use that formula? How long did it take me to do that? 30 minutes. Exactly. It's still a half an hour, right? It's the same trip. Right. So now I would write 2.7 kilometers at 40 degrees north of west, okay, that's all part of it, okay, divided by 0.5 hours, okay, so I would get uh, 5.4 kilometers per hour at 40 degrees north of west, okay, is it okay that my velocity and my displacement have the same vector? Let me ask it a different way. If I walk 
two kilometers east. Is it possible to me for me to have a velocity of one kilometer per hour north? Not at all. Okay, that would be saying I did two different things in two different directions. Your velocity vector and your displacement vector will always be the same because one causes the other. Okay? By walking at 5.4 kilometers per hour at 40 degrees north of west, I end up 2.7 kilometers at 40 degrees north of west from where I started. Okay? They're always going to have the same vector because they're talking about the same thing from different points of view. Okay? One about how fast did I do it, one about how far did it go. Are we okay with that idea? Okay. Now, that's the difference between a scalar description and a vector description of that part of the trick. Okay? Now, what if, because this has never happened, I get there and I realize, oh crap, I didn't bring my phone or my wallet, so I have no way to pay for anything, so I'm not going to walk around Walmart for the fun of it. Okay? So I just turn around and walk home. That's never happened. Okay? Um, so, when I get home, and I follow the same path all the way home. How far have I gone? 16 kilometers. Yeah, I'd be there and back. It was four kilometers there. Oh, yeah. So to get back, it would be? Eight. eight. Right, I'd be eight kilometers. That would be my total distance travel. Eight kilometers. What's my displacement? Zero. Zero. Right, because I'm back where I started, right? If I go back to the original position, I have not changed my position. The definition of displacement is change in position. So if I end up back where I start, I have not displaced myself. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, I mean, if you go strictly mathematical, final position minus initial position, if that's the same number, you get zero. Okay. Um, all right, so if I walked and it took me a half an hour to get home, what's my average speed over the whole trip? Eight kilometers per hour. Still eight kilometers per hour, right? It took me 30 minutes to get there. It took me 30 minutes to get back. Did exactly the same thing. Okay? So I went eight kilometers per hour. But what's my velocity? Zero kilometers per hour. Zero kilometers per hour. Remember, velocity mathematically is displacement divided by time. And we just said the displacement was zero. Okay? If we're talking about a, a definition of velocity, it's the rate of change of position. But I didn't change my position, so there's no rate at which I changed it because I didn't change it at all. Okay? So the velocity is going to be zero as well. Okay? Is that ringing a bell from size 10? Okay, so if we're looking at this map here, let's say that I'm here at um, Seldom Inn Campground, and I want to go here to Snake Indian Falls Campground. Just outside of Seldom Inn Campground, there's a sign that says, Snake Indian Falls Campground, 27 kilometers. What is it, what is it telling me? Scalar quantity, the distance from Seldom Inn Campground to Snake Indian Falls Campground. Okay, it's telling me the distance. How does it know that? What is it assuming? I'm right. It's assuming I'm going to not be an idiot. Okay, and follow the trail here. Okay, there could not that anyone would ever do this. Be a sign right here that could also say Snake Indian Falls Campground. Um, you know, 19.8 kilometers at uh, 50 degrees west of north. But short of having a helicopter, nobody's going that way. Okay, sure, it's accurate, it's a vector description, but these are all rivers that are in deep canyons. This gray stuff is glacier, okay, mountain tops and things like that. This is not a practical way to go, okay? So, scalar is not always bad. We get this idea that scalar is not as good as vector, okay? But there's lots of times where scalar is better than vector, okay? If there's a, a route to take, scalar is better because you're just going to follow that route and not have to think about it, okay? But if you're an airline pilot or a cruise ship navigator or something like that, you need vector descriptions, 
Okay? You're not following roads when you're doing those things. Okay? So you've got to plot a course and follow it, and that's going to involve doing the, the vector type. All right. Okay, so just terminology here, kind of review of what we've been talking about. Remember, speed is a measure of the distance traveled in a certain time interval. So it's going to be in kilometers per hour, meters per second. Okay, most of the time meters per second is what we're going to use. Okay, and it's a scalar quantity, right? So as we said, if you walk to Walmart and the trip took you half an hour, your speed is eight kilometers per hour. Okay, uh, for the velocity for the same trip, I think I used different numbers here, but it was close. Okay, um, we would have our magnitude and our direction because velocity is a vector quantity. Okay, and then we already talked about what would happen if we came back to the start. Okay, that our vector quantities would return to zero because there'd be no change. Okay, so terminology here. Scalar quantity, any measured quantity that has only a value or magnitude. All right, so scalar quantities are distance, time, speed, energy, work, <coughs> power, okay, things like that. Is your weight a vector quantity or a scalar quantity? Scalar. It's vector. Your mass is scalar. That's another one we mess up in North American society all the time. Okay? And I love messing with people on that. Okay? Anytime somebody asks me what I weigh, I tell them 760 newtons. At which point they chuckle uncomfortably and usually find someone else to talk to. Which is totally okay with me because I'm like not a really social person. And also, just never ask somebody that. It's rude, okay? But I don't lie. I tell them exactly what my weight is because weight is a force, which is a vector quantity. It's the force of gravity pulling on my mass, okay? And it changes, not because I get fatter, but because I can go to different places where gravity pulls on me differently, okay? If I want to lose weight fast, I just go to the moon. I'll weigh one-sixth of what I weigh here. There won't be any less of me, okay? I'll still have the same mass. But it is funny to watch people go <laughs> and walk away because okay? they don't understand what they just did. I don't know, I get to feel superior somehow or something. Okay. Um, so distance is another scalar quantity. It measures how far an object has traveled. Okay. It's just going to be in meters, kilometers, okay? something like that, most often meters. Speed, scalar quantity that measures how far an object travels in a set time interval. Okay, so again, how fast we're going, so meters per second, okay? Um, and then vector quantities are any measured quantity that has both a value or magnitude and a direction. So 40 kilometers forward, 3.2 kilometers at 18 degrees west of south, um, 765 newtons down, okay? Um, for, you know, acceleration is also a vector quantity. Uh, so the ones we're going to deal with most, displacement, okay, how far and in what direction an object has traveled from its starting position, okay, or its change in position, okay, and velocity is the vector quantity that measures the displacement of an object during a set time interval. Right, and then we've got our formulas there, okay, that are hopefully familiar to everybody and will, of course, be on your formula sheet, so it's not like you have to memorize them, although you probably are. Okay, questions so far on that? Okay, hopefully that seemed familiar from Science 10. Okay. Anybody still need that? Okay, remember you don't have to copy down everything that's on the screen because it's in the notes package. All right, so we're going to go over a couple of examples here and just kind of see how we do. So I would like you guys to copy this one down. Okay, I'll give you a couple minutes to get a copy down, and then we'll go through it together. 
So in this example, okay, the person is starting one and a half meters to the right of the Anukshuk. Okay, so this is their initial position. Okay, they walk so that they end up over here three and a half meters left of the Anukshuk. Okay, everybody with me so far? All right. So according to what we know, displacement is final position minus initial position. Now, because we have a diagram, we can pretty logically just look at it and figure out what the displacement of this person is, okay? If they are one and a half meters to the right of it and they end up three and a half meters to the left of it, they've walked two meters to the left. Five meters to the left. Remember, they're starting here. This is my reference point. Reference points are important, okay? Because okay, they, they allow me to measure where my initial position is, right? My, my initial position, because it's not zero, okay, has to be measured from somewhere. And that's the importance of the Anukshuk. It's my reference point. Okay? So I start over here, and I walk five meters to the left. Okay? Mathematically, that looks like this. Final position is three and a half meters left. Well, left and right are opposites, so I have to make one of them negative. negative. So I go negative 3.5 meters minus 1.5 meters. That's going to give me negative 5.0. Oh, that doesn't look like a 5.0 meters. Okay, and the negative applies to left, so my final answer would be the displacement is 5.0 meters left. Okay. What was the distance traveled? Five, Five meters. Is that pretty straightforward? Okay, let's have you guys try these three here. I'll give you a few minutes and then we'll walk through them together here before the bell goes. Okay, let's have a quick look at these here, guys. So, one of the most important things you can do when you're dealing with vector quantities is to draw a vector diagram, which is something we're gonna use a lot and do a lot of going forward, okay? So for question number one, everything is north. They run north, they walk north, and then they sprint north, okay? So if I'm drawing a vector diagram of those vectors, I would go and start with the 40 meters, okay? and then the 20 meters, and then the 100 meters. Okay. Now my scale's not perfect, okay? but it's close enough for what I need. Right? The 20 was about half as long as the 40, and the 100 is you know, about twice as long, and maybe a little more than twice as long as the 40. Okay? So they all go north. What do I need to do with those three numbers? Just add them together. It's 160 meters north. Okay, that's all there is to it. What would the distance travel be? Same, same. 160 meters just without the north. All right, for number two, okay, we, we've got this basketball player who's doing the give and go, so they're gonna fake out the defense by moving 0.75 meters to the right. So I'm just gonna draw their initial position right here. They're gonna go 0.75 meters this way. And then they're gonna go back three and a half meters to the left. So they want the displacement, that's this number right here, from here to there. How would I get that? Uh, negative 3.5 plus 0 0.75. Yeah, exactly. Okay, negative 3.5 uh, plus 0.75 okay, is going to give me uh, 2.75 meters left. Okay? When you draw the diagram, the answer can a lot of times just kind of jump out at you from the picture. Okay? And that's why we always say we should always draw a vector diagram for any question we do. Now, I heard some people talking when they were kind of working this one out in their head, and a few people said negative 2.75. Which one of these answers is right? The bottom one. Did the question give you left and right or positive and negative? left and right. Your vector and your final answer needs to match what the question gives you. Yes, we have to convert back to positive and negative to do the math, and then we gotta go back to the actual directions you were given. 
Okay, and then last one real quick, okay? You're going back and forth, putting mortar on bricks, okay? If you come back to where you start, what's your displacement? Zero. Zero, it doesn't matter how many times you've gone back and forth, okay? But they do go back and forth, what does it say? Six times, four times. So 1.7 times four would be your total distance that the trial travels. All right, we'll work on some more stuff like that tomorrow.